Welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider YouTube channel and my five minutes to cloud series of learning videos. In just five minutes, you'll gain a clear understanding of today's topic, how it works and why it matters in modern technology. If you're into learning about cloud computing, whether it's serverless, containers, Kubernetes, cloud native or multi-cloud, make sure you subscribe, like this video and drop a comment below with your thoughts or questions. Let's dive in. So what is serverless cloud computing? Well, it's a bit deceptive because it doesn't, it doesn't eliminate servers. We're still dealing with servers. What serverless is able to do is in essence, allow you to write functions that are able to carry out uh, application behavior, whatever you want the application to do. And you don't have to allocate or provision resources to that function. It does it automatically for you. So if you need compute, you need storage, you need access to a database, all of these resources are going to be allocated for you on demand and they're going to be spun up and they're going to be spun down. So obviously serverless has some cool applications. We'll talk about those. So how does serverless cloud computing work? Well, it's able to run code in response to events. For example, HTTP requests, database changes, things like that. And the changes are in part broken into small stateless functions and they execute only when needed. Cloud providers handle infrastructure, scaling, patching, and maintenance automatically for you. So again, we don't have to waste our time as developers in figuring out how many cloud computing resources, storage, compute, things like that, perhaps AI, uh, you know, AI systems, need to be provisioned to support the particular functions that we're running. The cloud provider does it automatically for us. So what are the benefits of this? Well, the key benefit would be first, no need to provision or manage servers. You focus on building the features, focus on building applications. We don't have to deal with infrastructure as developers. Automatically scaling instantly, they're able to handle any amount of traffic. Basically, it's able to scale up and scale down, adjusting itself to particular application load that you're dealing with. And then pay-per-use pricing, you pay only for what you use. I know that's a cloud computing thing, but you're not having to ramp up a resource such as a storage system and leave it running long term. We have to pay for it being up and running. You're able to allocate it. It's able to provision it automatically and then deprovision it. And then ultimately rapid development is able to speed up time to market. In other words, if you're able to build applications faster using serverless systems, then applications can be built faster. We can get it out into the marketplace. We can support the needs of the business. So what are the common use cases? Well, web APIs and microservices would be one. Also, data processing, file uploads, imagery sizing, real-time notification, chatbot backends, things like that. Uh, you can also uh, set it up to do periodic tasks, in other words, cron tasks, where they're able to lie in wait and then, and then launch themselves at any particular time. So what are the challenges with serverless cloud computing? Well, cold start latency is one. Some idle functions take time to spin up and people notice that there's a latency when using serverless systems versus non-serverless systems. Vendor lock-in would be an issue as well since you're writing this to a specific cloud provider because they all have their own proprietary versions of serverless systems. You're ultimately uh, risking and not risking, you're actually gonna be locked into that particular provider. That doesn't mean you can't port it to another serverless system or another non-serverless system, but it's gonna take some time effort. There's some risk associated with that. Limited execution time, resources per function would be another. Uh, you could be allocating too many resources or not enough resources because we're doing it or basically allowing the cloud provider to do it for us. Debugging, monitoring, and testing becomes trickier. In other words, if we're building a serverless system, there's other things that are occurring and it could, uh, uh, could be a bit problematic to debug. And then security, shared responsibility between providers and developers can also be a bit more complex with serverless. So what does this all mean? Well, serverless is simple, scalable, and cost-effective. That's why people use it. And it's very convenient. So in other words, this is the technology of convenience. It's kind of the easy button for building cloud applications on public cloud providers because it's able to take care of the resource allocation, allocation automatically for you behind the scenes. It's great for startups, prototypes, unpredictable workloads. In other words, we don't know how many resources we're going to need. Making it a serverless application means it's going to automatically scale it and it's going to provide us with just enough resources that we need to solve the problem and it shouldn't be uh, uh, many more so we don't have to over allocate or under allocate resources we allow the cloud provider 
to make those decisions for you. It, it's a fast growing ecosystem, you know, basically serverless is powering more complex apps. And now we have serverless everything out there, serverless databases, serverless con containers, and the cloud providers are understanding it, that it's a nice niche market for them to grow the use of their particular cloud service. Well, I hope you enjoyed this five minutes to cloud video. We'll see you next time. And let me know what topics you want me to cover.